Today we're going to talk about the behavior of trophy bass. My first suggestion for catching bigger fish or trophy sized fish is to go ahead and, and target slightly deeper water. Now if you notice I say slightly deeper, I didn't say deep water. Depending on where you're at, this may be going from four or five feet to seven or eight feet. Or maybe it is going down to 30 or 40 feet. But the reason I say slightly deeper is because in many fisheries across the United States is those, those smaller bass really tend to occupy and almost overrun the shallows. Okay, they're up there super shallow and those bigger fish are oftentimes going to be out a little bit deeper. I've seen it on underwater cameras. I like to focus on the depth where the light penetration falls off and I'll link a video specifically about that at the end. Now this varies for every body of water. If it's really clear water, it might be 20-25 feet. In other bodies of water, this might be four or five feet. Another way to think about it is imagine those predators lurking just out of sight, just into the shadows. They like to be down there and then still be able to look up into that shallower, shallower water and you know see where the sunfish are, the shad, that type of stuff. But finding where that light stops, that transition line, is a good, good place to start if you're going to fish a little bit deeper for trophy bass. Next thing to think about is the caloric intake. I know I'm getting a little scientific here and it sounds kind of fancy, but really what it comes down to is big fish get big because they eat more calories than they burn. Now think about the type of fish that often just chase your lures all over the place. They're those one pounders or smaller, right? You just throw anything out there and they'll just chase, 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 chase. They're burning a ton of calories. Now don't get me wrong, trophy bass will go out and get a bait and grab a meal, but it's just inborn naturally. The instinct is to survive. They have to consume more calories than they burn. So how does that translate to the type of baits that we're going to use? Well, it doesn't mean that you've got to use monster size baits. Yes, that's going to work. You throw a big old swim bait in Southern California, you're probably going to catch a big old bass. But I like to think about it more as I'm going to provide a good meal. What, what is something that would be a nice size meal? Sometimes that is going to be a really big bait. But I kind of focus on the size of the sunfish that are in the body of water that I'm fishing, whether or not they're shad. I like to focus on the sunfish. If most of the bluegills that I'm seeing are around this big, okay, I'm gonna to try to pick a bait that's about like that. If I'm seeing a lot of sunfish that are bigger, I'll go ahead and pick a bigger bait. Sunfish, panfish are often overlooked as far as a food source for the bass, especially in waters where there's just a ton of shad. So that is how I personally pick the size of my lure, match the sunfish that are in the water, give that big trophy bass the confidence that it's going to get more calories than it's going to burn while chasing that lure. The next thing to think about is that the bite from trophy bass oftentimes is almost imperceptible. Yes, there's those moments where we throw a punch rig in the matted vegetation and it rips the rod out of our hand, but I mean day in and day out, the bites are almost nothing. And here's why that's the case. If you've ever watched bass underwater and watch them eat, they don't actually go up to the lure and just move right through it and you know attack it. That happens sometimes with top waters or when they're very, very aggressive. But often they will come up to a lure, kind of look at it there a second, you know, maybe back off and get the depth perception down. And then they just flare those gills and just inhale that thing like a vacuum cleaner. And the larger the bass, the more suction that they can use to pull that water. And if you think about like a jig or a Ned rig or something like that getting pulled in, you don't feel much. And if you do feel a thump, it's that lure actually hitting the inside of their mouth. And the amazing thing about a bass is their brain can process whether or not they want to eat that bait like 
that fast, like lightning fast. If you've seen bass underwater, you know they can inhale it and spit it out in way less than one second. Well, think about an angler up in a boat or on the shoreline, especially if you have a lot of line out there. You could have a 10 pounder, inhale that thing and spit it out and you never, ever know it. The next tip that I've noticed about trophy bass behavior is they really like to, to get an isolated cover. You know that tiny little stick up that you see going down the shoreline that you don't even take the time to make a cast to? Oftentimes that's where they're really hanging out. Yes, you're going to find big fish buried up in the thickest, nastiest spot, but I've noticed that it's almost like a king of the hill type syndrome. They like to dominate a piece of cover or structure that they are sitting on. Not saying that they're going to be the only fish on there, that they're going to be alone, but those isolated places tend to hold good fish. Let me give you a great example. I was fishing, uh, preparing, I was in practice for a Bassmaster Open event out of Buffalo, uh, New York on Lake Erie. And I had a flasher on my boat and I was shooting across Lake Erie. And the cool thing about the flasher is it can read and respond even when you're not idling, right? So it, it responds very quickly, the readout. And I was shooting down the lake and all of a sudden my flasher goes boom, boom. Like, whoa, what the heck was that? So I pulled it down and brought the boat back around and hit it with the regular electronics a couple times. And it was a rock pile that was roughly the size of a car, okay? It wasn't on any of my topo maps, graphs, or anything. I mean, it was just a tiny, tiny, tiny little rock pile. And I had a tube jig tied on, water was super slick, calm. And I took that tube jig and dropped it straight down to it. It hit the bottom and I just felt, bump, boom. I set the hook on that thing. It was the biggest smallmouth I have ever caught in my life. I had a 22 inch bump board with me, okay, for the tournament. The tail of that smallmouth completely hung off of that bump board. And this smallmouth was on this small little isolated subtle piece of cover. Now I have no idea how many other bass were down there with it, but I will tell you this, that big old bronze back definitely dominated whatever it was sitting on. The next thing I've noticed with trophy bass behavior is they don't really chase that far. They will chase, but it's not like that one pounder that may shoot 50, 60 feet out from under a dock and just to blow up your soft jerk bait. Casting accuracy is much more important when it comes to landing trophy fish. You've got to get those lures in those places and present them properly. If you miss that stump by, you know, two, three feet, odds are you're not going to get that bite that you're looking for. Sometimes you will when they're very aggressive and really feeding. Taking the time to bring the boat around, face it into the wind so you can put that jig right where you want it. All of those little factors are going to help up the odds of pulling that trophy fish out of there. The next thing is that we need to realize that fish do have memory. As a matter of fact, there's an Edwin Evers video that I just love and I'll link it down below. The, the biologist, the fisheries biologist that he's fishing with and talking to mentions that in their tests in their laboratory that bass would remember a negative stimulus for up to six months. Now think about that. So if you hook a big old five pounder on a big deep diving crankbait, there's a good chance that that fish is going to ignore anything that looks similar to that for quite a period of time, even up to six months. That, if that hadn't come out of the mouth of somebody that has a doctorate in fisheries biology or master's, I'm sorry, I think he had a master's degree in fisheries biology, I don't know if I would have believed it. Six months is the shutdown period that you might find from a negative stimulus that a bass has. So how do we translate that to catching trophy fish? Think about what is being fished, the lures that are being fished the most on your body of water. Throw something different. If everybody is throwing the same thing, the odds of you sticking a really good one go down. And hey, if you would like to watch that video on light penetration or that transition line that I was talking about, go ahead and check this one out right here. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.